I, I would say those more than outweighed my little petty, oh, somebody said, oh, my ego, I'm so fragile, you know. But, you know, it's not even your ego. First of all, I, I commend you. First and foremost, listen, I think you're a brilliant comic. I think you're a really smart person, but and you're just dyslexia aside that has nothing to do with your intelligence. The, you're a good person and a nice person. And, and I think that those are few and far between. And you're loyal to your friends and you're loyal to your staff and you're uh, loyal to your wife. Yeah, and, and it you're... pays off though. But it, and it, and it pays hey, off. Hey, listen, you got a lot of stuff and it did pay off. You had a number one show. You got a, I think you have I, I four cars now, yeah, four? You know, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. And every mistake I made in my life, I'd learned from. You know, there's a story I always tell about uh, why I believe the Cosby women. Because when I was 19, I was a comedian. I was going to clubs in Boston, you know. I went to this one club. And I said, I'm a comedian. You're a comedian? Yeah. The guy said to me, how long have you been a comedian? I said, well, uh, I'm about a year. A year? He said, you've got to be in the union within six months or it's a violation. You know that, don't you? I go, no, I didn't. This was the AGVA union, the stage, you know. I said, no, 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 no. you got to be, I can't, I, I, I can't even talk to you unless you're in the union. This guy gave me this whole big thing, you know. So he says, hey, go down and see this guy. So I got out and see the guy in the Agva office in downtown Boston. And just like, just an empty office with a chair and a guy in it, you know. And I go in there, how you doing? And I go, and he says, are you the guy? That did, I just talked to so-and-so. Yeah, okay. How long have you been a comedian? And I said, well, almost a year. Well, almost a year. That's a violation. I, I could find you. And he goes on and on about you know, the union, you know. I said, well, I'd be glad to join. How much is it? He goes, $300 a year. I said, well, I don't have $300. And he goes, well, how much you got? I said, I, I got 75 and he takes my $75, right? And he writes on the back of his business cards, union man and signs it. And he goes, give this to the guy when you go back to the club. Now I knew I was being taken, <laughs> but much, much like the girls in the Cosby situation, when he invites him up to the room, you think, is this real? Is this, is this going to be? So I gave the guy the card and the guy took the card. He laughed in my face, said, no, kid, okay, we don't need you. I'm not looking for comedians. I knew I had been taken for $75. But in a sense, I believe that maybe this was true. So when I would see something like those women with Cosby, people go, how could they be so stupid to go up to his room? I go, he's the biggest star in television. He's America's dad. Why would you not? If he saw you and thought you were good and told you so, why would you not believe him, you know? Right. And so to me, so that's one of those mistakes that just taught me empathy. It taught me to understand sometimes people do things against their better judgment because they just want to believe so hard and so much that well, maybe this, maybe this is the way the grownups conduct business. Maybe this is the way show business works. You know, you got to be in this union thing. Wow. Well, I mean, I knew I had been taken, but I wouldn't change that experience or anything because I, I mean, I remember talking to friends of mine, all these Cosby women, they knew what they were doing. They knew that they didn't because I didn't know, you know, I was naive, you know, it is just a matter of being naive. How we introduced me to the president of show business once. Who was that? I just told him it was the president <laughs> of show business. <laughs> did you really? Was, I did. I, one time we were at the comedy store and I said, Look, I, want, I can't remember who it was, but it was a friend. I just said, you got to meet, we got to make commission. This guy is, no, vice president. This guy is the vice president of show business. And you were so. I ran over there. He ran over there and he goes, my name's Lou. I'm going to be on at eight. And then the guy said, will, will you watch me? I remember you coming back to me and going, Howie, you can't believe the vice president of show business is going to watch me tonight. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. I mean, that's the perfect, that's, that's the perfect case.